Hey, it's Nick here. I got an interesting comment on one of my videos about 11 hours ago from a user who calls himself Joe Mama. He writes this, here's a real world flat earth proof. Exalt Wireless has a product called Explore Air, which is a line of sight microwave transmission platform. I'll put his full comment below the video, but he writes, this product is a line of sight microwave link, which is basically a straight line over water, the Mediterranean Sea to a receiver on the other end about 150 miles away. There should be three miles of curvature, but this line of sight connection is mounted at less than 50 feet on both ends. He writes, I spoke to them today to confirm this and didn't bring up the reason why. I told them I was just impressed with their accomplishment, wanted to learn more about the equipment and the installation. It is as advertised. A straight line over 235 kilometers of water, that's about 146 miles, point to point, no repeaters. So if you want to check it out, go to www.exaltcom.com. This is their website. And then I found the original article that the gentleman posted about. It says that they believe they did a record-breaking 235 kilometers over water. Now, why would they do it over water? Well, if you ask me, it's because water is always level. If you've watched any other videos on this channel, you know that uh, the reason why I believe the earth is not a globe is because water always seeks its own level. This is another article just to confirm. It's Explore Air LR 7 gigahertz microwave system achieved a connection with an access point that was located 235 kilometers, about 146 miles away. And what I found interesting is looking into microwave transmissions is I found an article talking about the science of how it works and they have a simple diagram that shows the transmission uh, the antenna that it runs through and then the receiving side uh, then the receiving end of the transmission but what I thought was interesting was this portion here between the links antennas lies another vital element of the microwave link the path taken by the signal through the earth's atmosphere a clear path is critical to microwave link success. Why? Since microwaves travel in essentially straight lines. Man-made obstacles, including possible future construction that might block the signal must either be overcome by tall antenna structures or avoided all together. Microwave transmissions travel in straight lines. Why is that important? Well, if you go to metabunk.org, they have a curvature calculator where we can put in some of the variables. First, the distance that they did this transmission was about 146 miles. According to the comment on the channel, the spokesperson for the company said that it was no greater than 50 feet in elevation. So let's assume that, the, that, that it maxed out at 50 feet. What it tells us here is that there should be a bulge between the first antenna and the receiver that's 3,500 feet high. And more importantly, from the transmitting antenna to the receiving antenna, there should be a drop of 2.7 miles. Miles. Now this website gives you a, a, a nice visual of what this would look like. So this would be the transmission tower that they send up, that they set up on, on Cyprus and they broadcast in straight lines, but according to a globe earth theory, they would hit the horizon right about here. And the antenna on the receiving side would be 2.7 miles below the visible horizon. And the bulge here in the middle, if you remember, would be about 3,500 feet that would have to be overcome. So the transmission of a microwave signal on a globe is absolutely impossible. This is what I believe truly happened. We have a body of water which is level because water always seeks its own level. And then we have two islands. We have the island of Cyprus represented on the left and then Lebanon on the right. They set up two towers, which the spokesperson confirmed were no greater than 50 feet in height on the coastline of both shores, I should say. And then they transmitted a signal, a total distance of 1 
146 miles. That is only possible over a level body of water. Hi folks, my perspective here. I'd like to relate an experience that I had about 20 years ago when I was filming on the Mascarene Islands and the situation was similar to what we see in this image and I was with a group of people, educated people, one of them was an amateur astronomer and we were filming analog in those days so we were doing a time lapse so if it took you four hours to film it took you four hours to capture the footage to convert it to digital so that you could edit it on a NLE and we're watching the the sun's rays and the hot spot on the ocean floor so I asked them a question I said how is it that the hot spots are moving away from us and so they looked a bit confused so let's analyze that so from our position right we could see another island that was 250 kilometers away from us we could see the complete island and so the issues that I raised was this there's the hot spots the clouds in front of us were black the clouds behind the Sun were illuminated that's the one issue so from our perspective where we were standing I asked them where where did it appear to them that the Sun was looking at that aspect and they said no the Sun appeared to be just above the clouds but that's just an illusion it has to be wrong that our eyes and our minds are playing tricks on us and then I pointed out to them that we were watching the Sun move away and we saw the hot spots move away with the Sun and at the same time we could see the island on the horizon so therefore if the Sun was a hundred and fifty million kilometers away from our perspective then we couldn't see the light shining down on the ocean floor and we couldn't see the light rays shining backward so therefore the Sun is as where we saw it it was above the clouds the Sun is not 150 million kilometers away and they looked and they reasoned and uh, they said no it has to be an illusion it simply cannot be then I pointed out to them well if the opposite was true then the, the hot spots would be moving towards our back so let's look at that in other words the clouds are spinning with the earth and you are spinning away from the Sun the Sun is fixed right it's 150 million kilometers away as you turn away from the Sun then the, the shadows and the hot spots should move towards your back because you are spinning away from the light source and we weren't seeing this right so the light can't move to your front it has to move towards your back if you are on a spinning ball what we were seeing was the opposite we were seeing the, the light and the hot spots moving over the clouds into the distance so this told us that we're not spinning that the Sun is moving and that the, the surface we're on is a flat surface also we were in the southern hemisphere so even if the light rays are coming directly at you it's the angle of the clouds to the surface in the southern hemisphere those hot spots and the shadow should always be offset towards the south and in the north the hot spot and the shadow should always be offset towards the north 
and of course the, the, the hot spots and the shadows should move towards your back as you face this the light source. Another issue is how could how is it that we could see the entire set of rays? Because you're on a curved ball, you could only see the one side. You can't see around the curve. So most people, you see, if, for them, when they start to analyze the ball you're living on, it creates issues for them. I will apprehend this culprit within 24 hours. Ah! Ah! Now we are getting somewhere. And it's only when you analyze and you think about what you've been taught that what we've been taught simply doesn't add up. Let's look at uh, the crepuscular rays. So this issue came up. And of course they said, no, it's just our eyes and our minds that are playing tricks on us. It simply has to be. Right? That it's, I explained perspective and how perspective helps us to see. And they said, no, it, it cannot be. There is no way that the earth could be flat and that the sun was moving. And then I explained to them that, for example, if the crepuscular rays, if what we were seeing was a result of perspective, the crepuscular rays cannot have its own perspective. It must match the perspective of what we already see. Because what perspective is happening in your eye, the sun cannot operate outside the values of your eye. And now our eye sees things. Also, if you're living on a spinning ball, right? How is it that we could see the sun for 12 hours? Because you can't see around the curve of the ball. You couldn't see the sun for 12 hours. Remember the scripture in John 11 verse 9 when Jesus said there are 12 hours of daylight every day. Well, you'd have the 12 hours, but you wouldn't see the sun for those 12 hours. It would be impossible. And so what they said that it simply cannot be that our eyes and our mind are playing tricks on us. You see, could it be that the trick has already been put in your mind and that's why you don't accept what your eye tells you or what you see. So could it simply be that because certain standards have already been placed in our mind that we are simply not looking and appreciating the true value and the true, true beauty in creation. It's a wonderful world we live in. You know, the fact that the earth is getting polluted tells you that there is no appreciation for what the Creator has given us. In my last video, uh, we spoke about the horizon and I said that buildings cannot stick up behind the horizon. And that's true because the horizon is the point of infinity. So even if someone argues and says, well, there's a, you, the buildings will be upright and you'll be upright and you can see a curve. Well, if you're upright and the building is upright, there can be no curve. The standard must apply evenly. The principle must apply in both cases the same. So the human eye has a limited range. You can only see a limited circle around you. In fact, the word horizon comes from the Greek word meaning limiting circle. So if I use a telescope, the telescope simply extends your view into the horizon. It increases your depth into the horizon. In other words, it's like having a bigger eye. The horizon stays in the same place. So, if you see a building, right, and there's water in front of the building, then you should raise your position. Go into a nearby building, right? Now why? Why am I telling you to do that? I'll give you a few minutes to think about it. Right? The answer is simple. Well, because what you're seeing is a tidal wave, and your life's in danger. 
and you your life's about to get messy very quickly so there's no way unless there's a huge tsunami coming your way that you're going to see a wall of water in front of a building it's just not possible i will apprehend this culprit within 24 hours ah! Ah! now we are getting somewhere so remember in the beginning when the folks that I was, that I was with said that our eyes and our minds are playing tricks on us. Well, the, the trick has been played in your mind a long time ago. Right from when you started school. The ball is, that was when your mind was tricked. Let's take history for example. We know that, uh, I'll tell you the Second World War started because Germany invaded Poland. Well, so did Russia. Stalin invaded the same time in the same week, right? And I'll tell you, well, we know from history that uh, the two armies never fought each other. They just simply invaded Poland and divided Poland, right? And I'll also teach you history that these two men hated each other and show you a couple of cartoons, right? And common sense tells you that for these two men to mobilize two armies and to build up two armies and attack at the same time and divide Poland, they sat at the same table and they planned this and what you've been told in history is just lies. Not long after that Adolf Hitler invaded Russia and while he was slaughtering Russians Stalin slaughtered his own people and no one questioned it because it's a war and because what the story you're told doesn't add up another story that doesn't add up is evolution you see if I told you that lightning struck this tree the tree fell down the waterfall and then it rolled down the river and in this process the parts were made and the parts came together and you ended up with a guitar that's in tune and that has a purpose and they take the name of the maker off the guitar well they're just simply trying to hide the maker of the guitar they don't want you to find out who the maker is because then you're going to want to learn about who made this guitar that's all evolution is they don't want you to think and search for the creator and the Bible says his name is Jehovah because the monkey his DNA cannot have a purpose and plan the outcome of a talking thinking writing human being it's simply not possible this is a dinosaur egg the mustard seed of dinosaurs I think it's called a titanosaurus right yet its eggs are the size and its nest is the size of a an ostrich so it's just a story as a crushed one so I don't know when she laid the eggs and were hatching them right if I said to you this elephant is laying eggs and hatching its eggs well this doesn't make sense doesn't add up maybe that's how the dinosaurs became extinct <music>so the point is that I'm trying to make is is that we've been given the the creators given us his word the Bible right? and we've ignored it and we're suffering the consequences of because we're not paying attention to it so I hope this makes you think and cheers and thanks for watching